I am Shivanshu, and unfortunately, the primary speaker Ekansh couldn't make it to the talk to, due to some travel issues. But he has prepared some nice demo for us. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So the target audience for uh, the talk are the people who want to manage their machine learning pipelines. Um, they are looking for managing their data and batch processing pipelines. Um, infrastructure automation maybe, and uh, they are probably already using uh, some f workflow management tool, uh, but want to explore a Kubernetes native solution. So the agenda includes uh, like basically what would be a business use case uh, of having workflows, like what could be a requirement for an enterprise today, and what could be the requirement for tomorrow. Um, what are the available tools that they can use? What is basically a definition for a workflow uh, for an enterprise? And uh, we'll go through some architecture comparison between Airflow and Argo. Some feature comparisons, and we'll see how monitoring and observability works there, and we'll have our demo. Um, so like, let's talk about a primary use case for an enterprise. The, everyone needs CI CD, and Probably, most probably, they are already using Argo there. Um, people are adopting Kubernetes, so they probably are looking for a workflow orchestrator, which works nicely with uh, Kubernetes. Integration with existing uh, GitOps pipeline, how they can integrate uh, a new workflow orchestrator with, with whatever GitOps pipeline they have. While defining uh, workflows, uh, Maybe they don't want any restricted by a language if, if they are comfortable with YAML, which they must be because they are using Kubernetes, then it's uh, easy to adopt a new uh, orchestrator, workflow orchestrator. Second use case could be uh, having an infrastructure automation, data and batch processing, managing machine learning pipelines. There are many uh, tools that can do it. So for example, Argo Workflow is a very good workflow orchestrator. Apache Airflow is there. Dexter, Cadro, and Prefect. We'll discuss Argo Workflow and Apache Workflows. Sorry, Apache Airflow. So what actually a workflow is, um, it's usually a DAG, a directed acyclic graph. And an individual node in a DAG is defining the task that you want to perform at that particular stage. And then you systematically arrange those nodes, basically creating a arranged dependency via, through which your data flows. So yeah, uh, in, in simple terms, DAG is dependencies between tasks, and task is what you want to do in that particular thing. So it's a very basic example of a workflow. If you want to make a pizza, you put on toppings, uh, you prepare the base, and you put it for baking. It's a DAG. So understanding Argo workflows, so what actually it is, um, it's a cloud native tool to orchestrate your workflows. Some key features are it's k-native by default. It's container-centric. It's designed in that way. Um, it's YAML-based, but it also offers some Python SDKs so that you can write your workflows in Python. So Hera is one of the SDKs that you can use. You can create dynamic workflows using Argo. And one of the best use cases for Argo workflows is uh, it's k-native, it's uh, generalizable, and can be used for data pipelines and uh, multiple cluster deployments. What is Airflow? Um, it's again an open source uh, automation tool uh, built by Airbnb and then contributed to Apache. Um, key features are it's uh, Python scripting, um, it's task-based, um, it's, it's also of, uh, offers excellent DAG creation, and there are some pre-built connectors in it which you can use. And one of the best uh, use case for Argo workflow is where you don't have Kubernetes, you want to run uh, like sort of a monolith uh, uh, 
Workflow Orchestrator, there you can use Apache because it's fundamentally not designed with uh, Kubernetes in mind. Uh, so let's discuss about the architecture uh, of the Airflow. So we essentially have uh, the DAG files which are stored and then the user can create the plugins in the plugin folder. The three things that are uh, like important is the scheduler, executor, web server, and the DAG file storage, and the metadata DB. So whatever DAG you define goes to the DAG file storage, which is in sync with uh, scheduler and uh, like all the components uh, with worker and with the trigger. Um, Scheduler basically hand, handles the triggering of your DAG workflow. Executor uh, configures the property. So Executor is a part of Scheduler, but it helps you configure the property of the Scheduler. You can define your own Executor or you can use pre-built Executor. Web server is the UI to, uh, basically it's a UI to which you can interact with uh, Apache Airflow. And metadata DB stores workflow and the different states uh, of the running workflow. And this is an architecture of uh, how Apache, oh, sorry, how Argo workflows work. So you can see a user can either use an Argo CLI to define the workflows or can use the UI. And uh, you can also use uh, this API client to trigger uh, your workflows or you can use uh, Argo events to trigger uh, your workflows. So the Argo server exposes this through an API which goes through the API server and that communicates with the Kubernetes API server. Workflow controller takes care of managing the reconciliation of your uh, workflow pods. It talks to the Kubernetes API server and uh, maintains the state reconciliation of your pods. There's artifact store and uh, workflow archive where everything is stored eventually. So if you look at the uh, architecture for the, uh, for the workflow controller, it uh, talks to the Kubernetes API server, gets the workflow from the label, puts in the, in the queue, and then there are uh, GoRoutines running, which takes care of creating the actual pod and the reconciliation of the worker pod. And when a, a workflow is created, uh, there's an init container that takes care of fetching the artifacts and the parameters. And then there is uh, the wait container, which takes care of performing any task which is needed before the cleanup. So this is on a very high level how it works so that if, if you want to use which workflow, like which workflow or cassetter you want to use, if you know the internals, it's probably easier for you to decide. Let's quickly compare the features. So Argo workflow is natively designed for Kubernetes, which means it's YAML based, uh, but it also supports uh, like Apache workflow, um, using uh, like for example Hera SDK you can define your workflows in Python. The REST APIs are available you can define your workflows and use the REST API. You can easily specify resource requests and limits uh, using, the, uh, using the Kubernetes uh, definitions. You, know, you don't need to like define somewhere else you can use the Kubernetes native things to define uh, resource requests and uh, service accounts. It, it comes with a native artifact support of S3 and Alibaba Cloud and other things. Um, you can also define uh, cron workflows, which means if you want to trigger a, a given workflow periodically, there you can define uh, like cron workflows. You can use templating to define and reuse the workflows. Uh, whereas in Apache Airflow, it's uh, like it's natively designed uh, so that you can uh, write your workflows in Python. Um, it, it has like great libraries to, for pre-built connectors uh, to some common data stores. It can be run on Kubernetes, but it 
can be challenging because uh, it's not fundamentally designed to be run on Kubernetes. It's designed to run on a, on a machine, a single machine. Um, yet it provides highly scalable uh, solution because if it's running on a, on a single server, it, it depends on the capabilities of that server, how effectively it can scale. Um, there's dynamic workflow generation in there, and it's extensible. For monitoring of your workflows, um, basically you can use whatever monitoring solution you are using for your Kubernetes components. Uh, you can plug them with Argo workflows. It comes up with a very nice web UI, uh, which you can like use to manually monitor how your workflows are uh, running. And there's a dedicated Prometheus uh, matrix adopter, uh, matrix endpoint uh, for your uh, Argo workflows. For Apache A4, this uh, like you can use your Kubernetes monitoring stack, but uh, it does not out of the box applies to all the components that are, that are there in uh, Apache Airflow. It also comes up with a web UI, which you can use for m uh, manually monitoring it. it has some uh, built-in mechanisms to support uh, observability, and uh, you can configure. Stress the or open telemetry uh, to collect telemetry from uh, Airflow. So let's uh, take a look at a very basic demo. Um, so what we are doing here is we have uh, our, we are using Argo events and we are using different um, like Argo events provides you many different uh, sources like Git, Webhooks, S3, messaging queues. Uh, in the demo, we'll be using Git uh, to trigger an event, and then uh, it will trigger the Argo workflows to perform some uh, things. So let's play the demo. But I need to pull this to that screen, which could be hard. Okay. Give me a minute. is not supporting audio. Once this is coming up, we will show the ingress as well. 
uh, apart from that, let's start with the installation of Argo events as well. Uh, so, we are going to install Argo events in uh, the Argo events namespace. So, QCTL apply Argo events minus an Argo. Yeah, so the basic fun fundamentals would be that we are going to make an event bus and the events are coming in from uh, GitHub or any of the Git providers and it's uh, going to the event source and then the event listener or the sensor and then it's going to uh, Google Flow Spots. Yeah, so uh, I have created an event source.yaml as well. So the event source looks something like that. Uh, the kind of event source, the name is GitHub. Uh, it's we have created we have opened it to our 13,000 ports. Uh, I have given the GitHub repository here, and the web command would be slash push, and any of the GitHub events will trigger this. Yeah. Uh, just ingress. So this is our ingress. Start. So here we have our workflows coming up, uh, templates and everything. Yeah. So this is the basic flow. Uh, let's start with installing the event source. So I have already created the secrets. I am not going to show you the secret because uh, it's obviously my GitHub secret. So I am not going to show you that but I am going to install event source first. So, QCTL apply minus F event source. Minus N yes. And we are done with that. Um, now I am just going to install the uh, sensor as well. So, QCTL apply minus F sensor or DML minus N R events. Okay. So let's see, and I have to install the event bus as well. Oopsie-tl by minus f event bus dot m minus m r for events. So it's a basic uh, CRD with the kind event bus. Uh, and we have made it, the name is default, and there are three replicas and more. Uh, so going back to the terminal, we go to the space, we go to our events. The event bus is coming up, the GitHub event source is coming up, the sensor is coming up. Uh, if we describe this, this is a basic event source. Mm, yeah. If we describe the sensor as well, it's a basic sensor. We can find this in the demo example of Argo events on Argo documentation. And uh, so we have everything configured here. So let's go and start with the demo of uh, pushing the file to GitHub. Yeah. Okay. So file or something here and push it to github so add a file create a new file and let's see uh, let me find a good workflow example so a good workflow example would be let's see a good workflow example point boss so yeah that point clip we will just copy this. We will create a new file here. And we are 
going to name it as bad, bad coin flip. Uh, this one. No. Right. We are going to commit changes. We are going to wait for any events that are coming up. And yeah, so let me just share my screen of our workflows. Here we see the workflow has been created in the hardware namespace. We are just waiting for coin play. So when we flip a coin, if it has tails, we just skip it. If it's heads, it will print heads. We can see the logs. It was heads. Then it's going down in the dab. So it will do it a couple of times and then it will end but in the meantime we are just going to see the pods as well so let me bring this tool ctl get pods minus n cargo so we see a new dial is always a new uh, pod that is coming up uh, whenever it's completed it is not completed it's still going on right now Yeah, so the whole dag is completed. Uh, yeah, so that's the demo for GitOps pipeline of our workflows. Hope you enjoyed it. And we will talk about metrics and observability later in the next video. Uh, there's one more video where we want to talk about how to use observability and uh, Python so error SDK. We are going to talk about metrics observability and error uh, about our workflows. Uh, so I have already installed Prometheus as well because it was taking a lot of time doing it. And I am going to show you what all I have installed and how I have configured it. And then we are going to go forward in 1980 and we are going to see the Prometheus demo in action. And after that we are going to work around with HERA as well. So HERA SDK is the Python SDK for our workflows. Uh, so let's get started. So sharing my screen, we have a video studio board already. Uh, Start on the terminal. Okay, so Duke CTL state pods minus n R2. Earlier we had installed Argo server and go for my folder. So that's good. Here. Now we are going to check Duke CTL get pods minus n Prometheus and Prometheus namespace. We have everything set up already. I'm going to show you the CRD. Uh, it's time service. We are taking a program controller from Argo namespace. We are going to check the metrics endpoint and we are going to solve it on 1990. It's the basic service monitor that we have set up. Uh, we can also uh, check the workflows in our own space with the QCTL command, QCTL get WF um, minus an R2. And we have everything coming up. Right? So let's just port forward everything to uh, 1990. So let me find the port forward command. We have this clear and it's on 1990. So we are going on local host. And we can check our workflow command. And it's coming up, it's that easy. Right? Yeah, let's see if it's any if there is anything that's likely in the queue. So Q dev. So everything is already done, so nothing is there in the queue. And we can also check a lot of things. Let's see. Our workflows or not. So yeah. Uh, workflow controller metrics and everything. Uh, the container is workflow controller and everything is coming up. So it's that easy to visualize uh, our metrics in Prometheus. And now let's talk about Hera SDK. So Hera SDK is the Python SDK for our workflows. So I have an example where I have already installed uh, the Hera SDK from uh, uh, pip. So let's do that. pip3. I can just show you, but I have already installed it. pip3 installed Hera. Yeah, so already I already have it. So uh, let's just see a basic hello world example. So we have a hello with hello demo dot I am going. I have uh, imported the steps, the workflow, the script from hello workflows package and from hello shared package. I have imported the root config. Uh, so the root config is for uh, setting up the host, the password, and if I have to verify anything and everything. So for the host, I have set it up for workflows twenty seventy two thousand four six, and I have uh, done the verify as well as false. The script that I have created is for just a hello world script. It's just going to break a hello world. So 
let's start with this. So what we are going to do is we are going to write t just to just to cut. We have Python 3 minus m error demo. It's going to warn me about a couple of things like adding certificates and anything, but we don't need it. And uh, we can clear it and we can see to CTL get pods minus n algo and we can see a pod that has just completed. So let's see on the uh, UI as well. So yeah, this was the pod which is just completed 26, 27 seconds ago. We are going to echo it. So containers and logs and it says hello world. And that's your example for here I stay as well. I am sure you might have learned something from it. And thank you for coming and attending our work course. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, so thanks. I think it's probably the one of the very basic talk for Iopan today. But uh, I hope there's something for you to get started with if you want to get started with our workflows. Yeah. If there are any questions, please ask.